My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, specifically the Darkest Rantopia Estate, the second thereof, the second of its name, King of the Andals and the First Men, over here in Darkest Dungeon. Alright, so, we've got this Book of Sanity for negative 20% stress, very rare, no negative side effect. Looks lovely, I'm sure it will be as well as once we pick it up, but we've got to kill a necromancer to get it. So when I think about killing the Necromancer, I think about a couple things. I think about, I want stuns that reach almost every line, because the Necromancer will summon people in front of himself, and those people will effectively move the Necromancer back. So if I can only stun the front two, or if I can only hit the front two, especially, this is why you don't take a Crusader, uh, it's going to become a huge problem for us. So instead, we've got a lot of characters here who can hit pretty much any line. We've got... Mevrel, the Master Hellion, standing up the front, is balanced as well as a Photomaniac, so that's a lot of power on her. She's also got the ability to pick up Sharpened Spear and Battle Trance just before we go into the battle, which will give her so much more usefulness. She will have Barbaric Yorp for all the trash mobs before the boss, and then if she wants to hit anything, she can target rows 1, 4, or 2 and 3. Sorry, 1, 2, four or two and three right she's got all the rows covered in one way or another and this guy doesn't have particularly high bleed resist so if it bleeds will actually do work against him similarly we've got Bordet, who also has the ability to do a stun to pretty much any row except for the first using disorienting blast it's also really important that this will clear all enemy corpses because in the final fight with the necromancer even if you do clear the enemies in front of him they leave corpses and you don't want to waste time killing them so, Bordet will be able to clear them while stunning the enemy boss. It's going to be handy, as well as all of these DOTs, which are incredibly useful for the dungeon, as well as for chunking the boss over time. This is a boss that only has one action per round, so it's not like Blights are the biggest thing against him, but they will be particularly useful, especially paired with the ability to stun. It's also nice to have a secondary heal that can target anyone at all, to back up our occultist, who's going to be our main healer, and also have a stun up until the third rank, using Hands from the Abyss. And then, finally, we've got a stress healer in the party. So we've got Pusho standing up here in the back. He's not hugely useful in the ruins because of the lack of bleed and the lack of beasts. So the bleed, the dot that his Hounds Rush does, uh, will not really apply. And he won't get the plus 30% damage versus beast because there's not that many beasts in this area. I mean, there are a few. The Slavering Ghoul comes to mind. Uh, maggots are in every area, so are spiders. But overall, he will be really good against the final boss because the final boss doesn't have an incredible amount of bleed resistance and Hound's Rush can hit any row. On top of that, he is a stress healer and we are going on a medium dungeon in the ruins, so I'm going to want a stress healer. Savvy? I feel like I've pretty much organized these how I want them. I think maybe the Plague Doctor moves back one, because the third line will be hit more than the fourth, and a Pusho Houndmaster already has much more evasion. Ten more, plus the ability to guard dog and increase his own evasion while taking other attacks. So, thinking about this in general for how I'm going to be fighting up until the boss. I'm going to be using Mevrel primarily for stuns. I'm going to be using Buron for fourth, uh, sorry, third line stuns, because Mevrel is going to yorp the front two. Then Buron will hands from the abyss, the third. And then pretty much is just damage. Pusho and Bordet uh, kicking in the damage. So Bordet has the obvious pickup of the Blasphemous Vial. I would actually like to increase his speed if I can do it without really costing myself that much. I don't want to do it with a Berserk Charm, though. The accuracy down isn't that bad. The stress up is... is... Mm, unfortunate. But the thing is, the only thing he really gets from the Berserk Charm is the plus speed, because extra damage on him does nothing. He does his damage via a DOT. I can give him the Swift Cloak. Does anything pull you forward in this party? Hands, uh, not Hands from the Abyss, but Eldritch Pull does. But that might actually be it. I think that's the only thing that will move a backliner forwards. So with that being relatively rare, I'm fine to leave that as is. 
Mevrel standing up the front is going to take Sun Ring for when she wants to deal damage, plus be a little more accurate, as well as a stun amulet. I'd love to stack her entirely with just damage and maybe even an Eldritch Slayer's Ring, considering I think the final boss here is Unholy Eldritch. But I really don't think I can afford to do that. Hmm, we'll consider that in a moment. But Pusho should pick up the Sun Ring as well as... Not the Ancestor's Map. I was going to give him... Whereabouts is it? Uh, there we go. Dismiss his head, increase his damage quite ridiculously. That's about a 40% increase in damage as well as 10 in accuracy. He does lose a little of his max HP, but he doesn't have huge max HP at the start anyway. So he loses, I think, four points. Three, three points. Then we can move over to Bjorn, who picks up Demon's Cauldron and always will. I wonder if perhaps on top of this, I actually drop in an Ancestor's Scroll to increase his healing skill. My feeling is I could put in a Vial of Sand to give him extra stun and move skill chance. So if you increase his move skill chance, he might be able to move the... What's his name again? The Necromancer to the front of the party and help us beat on him a bit more. But the thing is, it really doesn't matter where the Necromancer is, actually, with regards to the rest of his teammates. We can still hit him with all of our abilities. We've built our party with that as an essential. This would be 25% extra stun skill chance, but with three different people in the party that can stun, if we're going to stun, we're going to stun. I think this is where I'm going to put my Ancestors map, because I was worried I wanted to put it on Bordet, but I do need Bordet to be as fast as is humanly possible. It's not huge that my other characters are really fast. It'd be nice if Mevrel was fast, and I can give her some speed out of the Mark of the Outcast. But the problem is, if I do that, what do I take away, right? Do I take away her ability to definitely stun the first two? Hmm. Maybe. Actually, it, it, it might be a good idea to drop the stun amulet. Because Barbaric Yorp is already a better than base stun. It's got a higher chance to hit. Whereas most at this point would have 130 because they've only been leveled up four times. This has 155 because it starts at 125. Mm. No, I'll keep as is. Alright, then I'm just going to have a quick check of our party's capabilities. Specifically, I think Bjorn's going to want Dark Strength. Bodette doesn't really need anything here. Unless I end up with a disease on a different character. Mevrel currently has a disease, but it's not one that I actually care about at all. No, we've got the possible, the good ones here. We've got Hound's Watch as well. Okay, we're pretty much covered. And I'm pretty sure everyone has, yeah, level 4 equipment. And the abilities that they will be using should be fully leveled up. I don't think I'm going to be using Vulnerability Hex. Weakening Curse I could use in the final battle, but I find it quite unlikely that I actually get an opportunity to use that and feel good about it. So instead, that is just going to be our full party as is. Beautiful. Start provisioning. So that's a full rest plus four hunger triggers. I, I feel like that is actually quite likely to be something that we need. Then three skeleton keys is definitely not overshooting it. Three shovels is definitely not overshooting it. Especially on a medium mission. I've, I've needed those before. I'm trying to remember, in the final fight, I don't think there are that many bleeds or blights. So I don't think I want to really take the holy waters to prepare for the final fight or anything such. That said, I should take, eh, like two holy waters just for the traversal through the dungeon. All right, let's embark. I entertained a delegation of experts from overseas eager to plumb the depths of their knowledge and share with them certain techniques and alchemical processes I had found to yield wondrous and terrifying results. Having learned all I could from my visiting guests, I murdered them as they slept. What a good host! A devil walks these halls. Only the mad or the desperate go in search of him. 
since we do have a body that reco uh, can recover itself quite adeptly, I feel pretty free to go around exploring for a while first. See, this guy has speed 9, so I'm actually going to hit him with a stun. Because otherwise he would have gotten an action there. One down. 70 versus 180, so I can actually stun him again. So I will. Eh. Funnily enough, he's supposed to be a huge damage dealer, but Mevrel just completely outshone him there. Alright, as long as that blights, and it has to. The back line is dead. Eh. This guy's unholy beast. Their formation is broken. Wasn't really they thinking about that at the time, defensive. unfortunately, but... Happens to be the case. The onslaught. Destroy them all. So maybe the Houndmaster will have targets. I, yes, did not bring anything for that. Even if I did get a critical ping here, it wouldn't scout anything for me, so... More than fine to leave it. I'm not going to pump the torch until I desperately need it. I will pop my head out here for a second and check what this Curio is. Nope. Bookcases are banned and I hate them. Knapsacks, however. Woo! That's a good knapsack. I think I'll be ignoring this passage here, so I won't see that Curio or either of these two fights. These things don't have a particularly high blight resist. So I think I can blight... Wow, never mind. Can't blight both the back two. Eradicated. Their stun resist is pretty high, which is Decimated. the biggest problem. Okay, don't be faster. The other one shouldn't be faster. Yeah. Because Bureaun's a 7, and they're only 4s, so the front one actually rolled pretty lucky to go first. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Beautiful. Gonna just get a stress heal off. I mean, a potential stress heal. It's done. Alright. This is the first round that he's been entirely alone, so I can actually stall for a little here. Especially if that blights. Beautiful. Heal myself for three. Come on! Yeah, we got one! Inches. We got one of the intended targets with the stress heal. Oh yeah, all it took was two usages. The light, the promise of safety. See, this is the one position in which I might prefer blinding gas. So that I can stun those back to and start dealing damage to them with other characters. The thing is, all of the other abilities I have are pretty much compulsory as well. So it's definitely, uh, definitely rather, a difficult decision to make. Alright, if I pull you forward, you'll only be able to use Knife in the Dark. Alternatively, I stun you, and you never get another turn, and then I can Iron Swan the back line. It's kind of Iron Swan-y. Not using the Iron Swan there frees me up to use the Barbaric Yorp, so everyone's locked down for a round now. Uh, we'll start on the Bone Veteran, because he's got a higher crit. As much as I like to use the Houndmaster's abilities, thank you. He needs to start doing some stress healing. 85 versus 180. He's only got a 5% chance to resist this stun. Beautiful. I'm just going to make sure that he dies over the course of that stun. Which now he will. There can only now be an action from Frontman McGillicuddy. 7 damage. Not enough to really annoy me. Slowly, gently, 
This is how a life is taken. Two and thirteen. I still need to use this, especially because the backline is much more likely to be hit by tempting goblet. Mevrel will go almost certainly fast enough to stun the Bone Bulwark there. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Huh. Really? That's... That's not good. Thankfully, he missed. So, effectively, he stunned himself for that and the next turn. But I can't help but feel that was unintentional. Okay... Little bit of a heal there. Yeah, you're not dead to that yet. Hmm. I'll still go for the stress heal because I have enough fast characters that. Dang it. The chance on Pew Show. It's really unfortunate that that's chance based. Right, just someone go before the character. Beautiful. Press okay. disadvantage. Give them no quarter. Managed to eke out a hell of a lot of recovery right there. Feeling pretty good about it. What's that? Our third fight and nothing has really... Like, no damage has really taken to us yet. You're on 90. You're on 95. All right. Well, at this point, it's probably worth swapping the trinkets around. Because these have, like, a... If I remember correctly, 45 percent chance to just reject being disarmed so you want to be really i guess i just come back at the end it has to be at the end which means i'm gonna take a lot of stress on my way back but then i can use this as kind of a recovery fight sure 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 that makes sense even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Well, see, now if I'm planning on coming back this way, I can actually just leave a lot of these curios. That's a buff that will continue until camp. Or it can give you a... What, what, what is it that it can give you? Ruins Explorer... Ruins Scrounger, Ruins Tactician, I believe. I do need to yort these two front. Pull you out of line. Perfect. Annihilated. Yeah, that could scarcely have been better. This guy can't really do anything. Bayonet jabs to try and move backwards. And then next round, he's got a Bayonet jab again. Oh, or die? You can just die as well, I guess. 80%, 120%. This is the only one that I can't target with my stun, so I guess this just means I'm going to have to throw a Blight in. 55% chance for a stun here? I can't really do that much upfront damage right now, so I may as well roll it. Surges as the enemy crumbles. Okay. That's pretty good. He's dead after this action. Fall warding. I did not know that they had a guard. Really? Well, that's just intriguing as hell. All right. Let's break that guard so we can focus on the front line. One stress, no reason to do anything except for kick in damage. This one can be stunned and therefore should be. All right. One hit with the damage dealer and one blight and this guy's gone forever. Bye bye. Ooh, and a crit to heal the only stress you have. Two hit points! It's all she was missing! Perfect. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. 
I fear for Buron being one of the frontliners that he might just get targeted and die. So I'm actually going to have him interact with this suit of armor. He also has fewer positive quirks as well, but Mevril has good positive quirks. I mean, she has balance, which is the only one I actually care about on her, but she has a full list of positive quirks. So if one of them was replaced, it's not as powerful as if it was on someone else. Plus 10 dodge, plus 15% protection on him. Not that bad. I, I guess if I am coming back, and I am now, I'll be coming back and going through those rooms then. For sure, let's do the inventory juggle. It's just worth doing because we don't have a super natural trap to disarm on anyone like you would if you have a grave robber or someone. Okay, good surprise, good surprise. <clears throat> Perfect. I guess I'm just accepting that the front two lines are going to deal damage. Okay, that guy's dead before he ever gets a shot. <clears throat> but I gave up the ability to yawp them, so I hope I don't regret this. Three damage. With a resist. Dodge. Yeah, I definitely don't regret that. Somehow, I'm fine with that action. Who'd have thunked it? Yop him. Yeah, with everyone on almost entirely full health, we are missing three health on our frontliner. There's no reason to do anything except for just quickly finish the fight. All right, beautiful. That means I can now use my Blight on this Bone Guard. Bone Guard Bulwark, rather. That should also stun. I'm not using the Dog Treats yet. Not only because these fights don't really call for it, but also because the boss is going to get dunked on. It's, it's a DPS race. You need to kill the boss before the boss can summon enough people to make the fight really difficult for you to get through. Okay. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Unfortunately, now that I've dropped both of the trinkets that can be used on any character, because this is only a Crusader trinket, it's going to make it a little more difficult to do the swapping of trinkets about. Oh, no, wait. Torch covers it. I... Do I clear this out first, then? Or do I use that as a recovery fight after the boss? I guess I use that as a recovery fight after the boss. It's weird. I didn't want to operate in this way, but I found that secret door so late in the game that this is just kind of how I have to react. That's really unfortunate. That's a lot of stress. single strike. 43 dodge. Apparently doesn't have 43 dodge. Nice resist, though. Yeah, their blight resist is kind of ridiculous. Making a plague doctor almost entirely useless. I'd love to start going for the supplicants, but the sycophants are the one that are actually... The ones, rather, that are actually going to make me sad to exist. Unfortunately, he still would have got another turn out, and if he used another Thirst, he would heal himself. So, I did need to use another action on them. Blight Resist. Yeah! Just resisting all of their shenanigans this is lovely. I can Blight one of these front two. It's not super likely, but it can happen. Okay. Quite handy that it did. Good, 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 good. Good work, buddy. I pretty much can't stun them, though. Let's just thin them down to one. Gather the blood. Come on, dodge. No! Looks like no Crimson Curse, though. 
Unfortunately, I can't fuck around with this guy, right? I need a little bit of healing, though. Sedated. Because if I go into a fight with that low health, I'm liable to regret it quickly. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Mm. That's a lot more stress than I want on my occultist right now. Oh, we didn't get a scout. Yikes. Okay, fine with hunger proc. See, I'd love if I could use a, not a feast for the resting, if I could just go normal rations or even half rations. But right now, I definitely need to full feast. Too much stress on my characters. So that'll only leave me with eight food, which means that if I do need... Like, if I get two hunger procs on my way back, I might just have to leave without the secret room. Which is a terrifyingly sad Altogether. possibility. Furtive and vulnerable. Rats in a maze. I'm going to take my two stress increasing trinkets off before I give her the buff. Then I'll prevent night times ambush and put my trinkets back on. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. She does have a debuff on her now, but it's only if she's not in position one. And especially since she's balanced, I don't think anything can really knock her out of position one. The way is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Does anyone change their abilities for this fight? No. 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 This is our ability setup. Yep. Everything's ready. Good, good, good. Just need to take that time because I have failed that before. Fierce. Okay. I guess I'm going to be yawping both of them. So, it's time for a stab. Okay. Hit me with that dog treat, baby. Uh, 15. Good. <clears throat> yup. by myself an excellently free round especially with my plague doctor going first that's really good 31 on the crit yeah this is like i hate to say but this is pretty much how i wanted this like how i thought this would go as well actually gonna roll the one with the bleed over time because nine points of damage on top of what I just did makes it much more effective than the upfront damage hit that I could have done. I could also stun the Bone Bulwark right now. But I think preventing the Necromancer from really doing much more summoning is going to be much more fair for me. Okay. Low rolling on both of those bleeds, but 12 plus 15, no, he's still alive, unfortunately. Thankfully, they didn't guard backwards, though, so... Yep, that's the end of the Necromancer. Now we just need to... Two Bone Bulwarks. Stress heal. Call me crazy, but we now have a really good opportunity to just chill for a bit. <laughs> We'll target the Bone Bulwark that is already stunned, because that Bone Bulwark is going to be less likely to be able to stun the turn after. Ears. Vision. The end approaches. Heal him. Okay. 17, solid heal, solid heal, all the way back to the tippy top. Nice dodge. Yup. 
Since there's two enemies on the playing field, we can stall indefinitely. There won't exactly be two enemies for long, but still. Oh man, these heals, bud, dude, guy, pal, friend, bro! Okay, that guy's dead before he gets another action. Eh. Come on, hit those front two. Maybe. So this guy has gotten an action, which means he's now stunnable. The lump of DOT on him. Unfortunately, Buron and Pusho are both occupied at all times with these healings. So I guess that's another turn of stunning for me. You can see why I decided that we can just stall this out at the very end. Because it's been ridiculously successful. Alright, we're all back at full health. I do still want to lower some of this stress. 27 is uncomfortably high right now. Cool. He's dead before he gets an action because he's still got a 10 point dot on him. So now we can just use whatever action for whatever we want. Compassion is a rarity. Until he dies. Okay, and then you'll roll your highest crit ability go for some stress relief oh meticulous blueprints this expedition at least promises success beautiful the quest however mon frere is not yet complete we'll be turning out the light as we start moving near these curios all the way back up here Actually, no. We'll go into this room, then we'll turn out the light and come all the way back and loot everything along the way. There's our first hunger proc. As soon as we get our second, I can finish that hallway, but that's about it. I need to leave after that. I'm not risking the amount of stress that I'm going to get on the characters for ignoring hunger procs. Okay. Beautiful. That's our last shovel as well, so we freed up an inventory slot. Uh, that's one key is earmarked for that. One key is going to be in this treasure room. And then a final key will be in the secret door over here. So I know where all of my keys are going as well. We should be able to kill the cultist enchantress with just an iron swan, considering all of the buffs that are still on my character. I won't be able to get much recovery out of this fight, but anything I can get is going to be good enough. Nice dodge. Clubman doesn't really frighten me. Unfortunately, we are relying on an action before the Bone Courtier gets his next round, and he's like 12 speed, so yeah. It's very likely he was going to act first. At least they put stress on a character that didn't already have stress, which is going to... The distribution of stress being a little more spread out is going to make the Hound's healing more effective. Good, good, good. And across the party. Perfect. Pretty much as well as you could have done. <sighs> and again, hit those two. Come on. Yeah, oh baby. This guy doesn't really pose much of a threat in terms of his damage output. The Bone Noble is already dead. That's why I stopped worrying about them. Rough. You're dead as well now. Nice. Nice dodge. If I can hit like a nine right now, I'm gonna... Never mind. <laughs> Uh, of course I wasn't going to hit a 9. May as well use a heal rather than try and crit him. He is quite slow, so I'm probably going to get another heal out. Yeah. 
only seven stress left. It's pretty well managed. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? I don't usually like to pat myself on the back, but uh, pat, pat. If I can get, ooh, sneaky, sneaky. If I can somehow get two more food, we could, uh, we could, we could end up going through the rest of this dungeon. Open it up. Do need to start a sack of gold because that's something I'm going to take home with me. I can't throw out these holy waters yet, just because these two curios could easily be holy water interactable. So I'll throw out the Swordsman's Crest. No, I'll throw out the Dog Treat. I'm not interacting with the Sarcophaguses. Sarcophagi. Uh, just because they can give you negative effects. I'd rather not incur that. Stashed heirlooms. Kind of what I'm looking for here, bud. Waiting to be spent. Look at these stacks of gems. Oh, baby. Stacking to the highest heights. I think this is the point at which I'll throw away the Swordsman's Cloak. Swordsman's Cloak? No. Swordsman's Crest, I think it was. I've already forgotten. No. I can't. I also don't even have a torch, so I literally can't. On top of not wanting to. Oh, but I'd have so many good damage bombs. Okay. I think if I was... If I still had a torch, I might actually be able to convince myself to do that. But I don't. Oh, nice. <laughs> Surprise them. Uh, well, with a surprise round, I'll be able to yawp them both before they get in action. So there we go. Guess I'm just going to be doing a lot of stress recovery on my characters. Especially if I still have the dog treat. We could... Oh, man. Now I feel bad. a good opportunity that I'm un uncapable was actually going to be the word I was going to use, so. Incapable of using effectively. This guy's already dead to the effects on him, so I may as well try and get a round of stress healing there. Unfortunately, it misses on the only target it needed to hit, but sure. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. If you're wondering, if you interact with that without having a torch to place in it, it just crumbles. Well, it does nothing. Let's right, the map inside. Sure, I've already mapped the entire area, so that's not going to be helpful. Ooh, beautiful. There can't be two... As far as I'm aware, there can't be two hunger procs in the same hallway. So I should be able to get to that secret door. Ah, here we go. That's actually upwards a basin that is cleared by holy water and it gives you gems, typically of a really high value. So I'm quite pleased to find it here. Because it kind of justifies me holding on to the gems that I held on to earlier. Sorry, holding on to the holy water I held on to earlier. Okay, that guy's dead before he gets an action. Now we can yawp these. I may have put too much planning and preparation into this body. Because... <laughs> For a second level boss in the hardest difficulty the Darkest Dungeon offers, Blood Moon, this, uh, this hasn't been that bad. There's not really been a trial and tribulation kind of stage. It's just been walk through, pretty much. Alright, dead weight on our dodgiest character. Well, second dodgiest character. He was our dodgiest character when I had the armor buff on him. Suit of armor buff. Unfortunately, I can't really get a turn of healing out here. See what I mean? Because I was moved out of position. Can only use the cry havoc from the back lines. 
seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. I don't need the portraits, but I kind of want that gold. Not really in place of anything I'm currently holding, though. Okay. Free this up with holy water. Now I can toss the holy water away. The first test. Now it must be carried home. Guess I'm gonna have to leave those. The thing is, as soon as I get into the... The... Did I loot an extra key? Oh no, this lockbox was unlocked. I didn't actually have to unlock it using a key. Right, right, right. I'm going to be foregoing the loot from that battle because I want to be able to throw away this key and... Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. This food. Damn. Last puzzling trapezohedron. I guess it'll have to overtake those crests. Six crests for two, uh, 3.5. Yeah, that's, that's worth. All right. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> that's, um... That's a hole and a half right there. 2.5. Uh, 2.3.5. A damn huge amount of heirlooms as well. Eagle Eye picked up on Buron. That's only going to affect his Hands from Abyss and the pull. They're all now moved to level 5, which is unfortunate, but was accounted for. I knew they were going to move to level 5. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Oof. See, the thing is, last week, actually, I didn't show you at the start of the episode, but there was a, a cultist that was locked away who had Photomania and I think Hard Noggin. And immediately I looked at him and I was like, you're incredible. 20% less stress and 15% less chance to be stunned. But obviously he was level zero, so I couldn't really pick him up. But a vessel that has Photomania, I can just lock out and mimic at the same time. The problem that I ran into when I was looking at that... Hang on. Let me quickly go to Embark so that I can... Oh, they're not in the party. Good. Okay. The problem that I had when I was looking at that was I sorted by class and I was trying to go, okay, let's think of our actual party builds, right? If I need a healer, I have options. I've got six different options right now. And I've got two of them as level... Uh, two of them level four, two of them level three, two of them level five. So I have widespread options. The only thing I don't have is a low-level healer for the couple people that are still low-level enough to really need one. I'm talking about Pari, Lucy, and Fontmai. Outside of that, my big problem is that I have no stress healers. I've got Fontmai, who is not yet level 3. I've got Fizzblood, who, if he goes into a mission, will become level 5. And then I've got Pusho and Brakra that are also already level 5. And the fact is, their scarcity has actually pushed them higher because I had to put them in more party compositions, so they got more experience, so they ended up higher level, right? So their scarcity has caused this huge level disparity between the lowest of them and the highest of them. Whereas, I think I have balanced it well enough to have enough healers to cover pretty much all of my needs. So I can't really be talked into taking Romnell here. Nor Homage, especially with slow reflexes. Parry with Meditator Cophobe? Nah, not really. As much as I do love Grave Robbers, I don't think they're amazing. I do love them, though. Uh, and Eldritch Hater. I can't really pick up another one. Eldritch Slayer Fragile. I could lock that in, lock that out, and that would be my... Second Hellion? But I really don't see, like, a huge looseness in my party. Like, I, I'm I'm pretty much covered for most of the roles that I need, except for Stress Healer. I'm pretty much going to be using Lucy and Reynard as Stress Healers in their parties as well. They're going to be frontline stunners who also have a Stress Healer. So usually I'm going to want a second line stunner with them as well who can take over the stunning once they're done. Alright. 
What have we got for our next mission? No rewards. <sighs> hmm. Unholy Slayer Ring is not horrible. Eternity's Collar is, though. Sun Cloak isn't bad either. I'm not too far. Like. Let's have a quick think about this. Let's sort by level and think about our highest crew. Darkest Dungeon 1, 2, and 3. I'm pretty much going to desperately want a Plague Doctor. Actually, it's not essential on 1, so it's like 2 and 3. Uh, the Stress Healer, so I'm going to want like Pusho or Braqua to come into Darkest Dungeon 1, definitely. I want people that are less trinket dependent in the second dungeon because they're going to have to hold Talisman of Flame. And I'm going to want a guard. So when I'm thinking about less trinket dependency and also having a guard, I'm thinking about the Man at Arms especially. Since with his Rampart Shield, he can just put any other trinket with him, he's fine. So basically, I don't have a Man at Arms on level 6 yet. Freybu, Fre uh, Feykamp, Major General himself uh, could easily fulfill that role for me. Baudet is already set. I mean, Man at Arms, then I'm missing a healer for the second. So if I'm missing a healer for the second, I want someone like Mortel, I guess, being an Eldritch hater, quick reflexes. Not having any negatives that actually affect them. There's not stuns in the third, are there? So I think I could also take Monty earlier. See, I fear I actually want Monty in Darkest Dungeon 1. The Shuffling Horror is in Darkest Dungeon 1. You can see, we are the flame, kill one Shuffling Horror. I want to talk through this for a moment so that you understand the kind of parties that I'm trying to build. I'm trying to have sets of four for the final Darkest Dungeon missions. Because as soon as I can complete those, I can just take my time with everything else. Someone was polite enough to tell me that, hey, Rhapsody, uh, the restrictions on a Blood Moon run, that is not being able to have more than 16 people die and having to do it in less than 100 weeks, are taken off once you kill the Darkest Dungeon. Excellent. So, in that case, I also want a pretty shuffle independent party in the Darkest Dungeon 1. So I guess I'm looking at taking Darkest Dungeon 1, Leoloth, Monty, Mevrel. Don't have a second liner then. Oh! Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, the second liner is a Highwayman. I don't have any Highwaymen uh, a high enough level yet to do that. So I'm going to need to start focusing on Vostel, Bergeuette, and uh, Dismas especially. Dismas isn't going to go into Darkest Dungeon 1. Dismas and Reynard will go into the final Darkest Dungeon. That is to say, Darkest Dungeon 4. So I guess I really want to start leveling up uh, Bergeuette here. Faded, eh. Hard Noggin, good. Quick Draw, good. Beast Slayer is, is good, actually, in Darkest Dungeon 1. And two as well. Vostel also has Hard Noggin and has Slayer. They're, they're going to be particularly good. Just the ability to repost and the fact that they can rectify the party ordering themselves using Duelist Advance is going to be really important against the Shuffling Horror. So I guess I'm going Highwayman, Vestal, Hellion, and just damage. Oh, but I can't take Leal off, so I guess I'm taking Pusho. Yeah. That that kind of seems how I'm going to be building my party for the first Darkest Dungeon, which means I am only two characters leveling to level 6 away. Or two characters leveling to level 5, but I do want them all on level 6 just to increase their resistances. All of that said, for the moment, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game is being Darkest Dungeon. We're like 55 weeks in now? 53 weeks in. We are just over halfway through the amount of time and we're already considering the first of our parties to complete the final objectives for the game so that paired with the fact that we have a fair amount of money almost all of our town is upgraded we've got really decent trinkets pretty much across the board and we have no deaths i feel pretty good about this
I feel like we're actually managing to deal pretty well here in the Blood Moon Estate, the Darkest Dungeon. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.